Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about determining zone three and zone four. Now, the one thing the critical power crew uh, helped me with was this concept of the heavy domain. This, pure, this area between the first lactate threshold and the second lactate threshold, or if you prefer aerobic threshold, your critical power point. There's a lot of different names for these two transition points. But this concept of the heavy domain, the heavy domain consists of zone three and zone four. And similar to the moderate domain, zone one and zone two, I think you're gonna find the best results from hanging out around the middle. So this sort of upper zone three. Remember last time in zone one and zone two video, I said, don't hang out at the top of zone two because you're gonna be going into the heavy domain into zone three and you're gonna be changing the nature of the situation. Same deal with your zone three and zone four training. Don't hang out at the edges. So low three or high four are not exactly, well, they're, it's risky on the high four and on zone two, it's not quite hard enough to get to the adaptations you're seeking. So you're better off shooting for the middle. Now, again, from last time, there's the heart rate ranges. This one is using a 200 max, and this one's using a 166 max. And it'll give you these ranges for zone three and zone four. And it's going to be a big range, even if you have a lower max than say a, a youngster. I mean, my kids' maxes are all well over 200 uh, right now, and they are 11 to 15. Okay, so we can use lactate to determine these zones, and we can also use a top-down method. And the easiest top-down method to give you kind of a starting point is to understand what your hour of power heart rate is. So if you were gonna do a one hour TT, uh, what sort of average heart rate would you settle in on? Take that heart rate and subtract 8 to 12 beats from that. That's going to give you a relatively narrow range. So if we use my data there in the corner, we take 153, we subtract 12 from it, we get to about 141. And that range of about 140 to 145, for me, is going to be just right for this type of training, this heavy domain training. And you're going to need to use trial and error for your tolerance of this type of training. And I talked about that when I, when I was talking about my loading uh, series. If you're getting fatigue that disrupts many days, your target's set too high and your dosing is set too high. When you start with this type of training, you need to have lower targets and lower dosing. Just get yourself into that sort of upper zone three type area, and that's gonna be good enough for you. And then you need to learn how you're tolerating it. And how you tolerate it is gonna be a factor of your physiology, the total load you have in your week, and what you got going on outside of training. So be smart, because it's the green zone training that really is where your money's at. It's not necessarily this stuff, and it's easy if you overcook yourself with your heavy domain training to have to give up a lot of volume in your overall week in your program, and that's not gonna be worth it for you. So this is something that you should view it as like supplemental volume, not essential volume. The green zone volume is essential volume. Okay, let's dig in a little bit deeper for the people that have lactate. So this chart to my left here, um, this came from the article that I referenced uh, in the zone one, zone two session. You are training too hard and will never reach your full potential. That same warning applies to this heavy zone main, domain training. If you cross over from this heavy domain into your red zone, into zone five, you're gonna generate a whole lot more fatigue for very tiny benefit, if anything. So it's a net negative. So that's why I want you targeting sort of the middle of this zone three, zone four range. It's gonna be, you'll tolerate it better, and ultimately you're gonna be able to roll up more volume of this type of training. So this type of adaptation. Now, in this chart, this is the typical profile that most of you are gonna be seeing, between two and four millimoles. So the tempo effort 
this high zone three effort is going to fall into about the two and a half to three millimole step if you're using progressive uh, ramp testing or a progressive test on the track or out in the field or something. Similar to last time, there's a range in the chart of the lactate, but most everybody's going to fall into this kind of two to four type range. And don't get hung up on anaerobic threshold terminology. As you move around the world, everybody has different words that they use to describe the same thing. It's approximately this two to four millimole effort. And where you want to sit in this zone, remember, is probably going to be in the lower half of it when you're starting this type of training. Now, like last time, I have a case study for you. Now, this is a progressive bike test. We have watts stepping up. We have the max heart rate per step going up. And we have the lactate reading at each step going up. And it runs from 100 watts up to 300 watts. Now, I've marked the key breakpoints for you. So up to 200 is under, at or under one millimole, if you'll remember from last time. So the easy zone goes up to there. And then a relatively narrow steady zone above that. And remember for our moderate domain training, for this green zone training, we wanna be hanging out around this first uh, lactate threshold point. Now, what you do is you take, a, you plot the curve and you're going to be using watts on the bottom or speed if you're plotting a, a run curve. And from that first lactate threshold, you'll draw a line up to the end point. And then on the curve, you can plot the curve using an exponential or whatever you want. I just draw it by hand because I know the overall accuracy is not, uh, doesn't require scientific analysis in terms of plotting the curve. So what we do is we draw a straight line from the first lactate threshold to the end of the test. And then we look for the part of the curve that is furthest from this line. And there I marked it, it was about 268 watts. So that is an estimate of this second lactate turn point. So functional threshold, the top of zone four. And then if I look around there, so 268, so I look around, so the millimoles uh, at the 275 uh, step was about 4.9. So if we take that 2.0 to 4.0, it's going to be kind of in that range. And what I've done here is I've marked tempo. And so I go a little bit up from uh, the first lactate threshold, and then I have this tempo zone. That's my zone three and zone four. And right down the middle of that zone is about 240 watts. And that would be approximately, it's going to be a little under 3 millimoles. And it's going to be, you know, probably about 2.7 millimoles. So it's going to be in that kind of 2.5 to 3 millimole range. And the baseline on this test was 1.0. So it's approximately 1.5, about above baseline. And that's a good start point for you. Now, remember, if you're the athlete that has a baseline above 1.5, I don't recommend focusing on this type of training. A much bigger priority for you is developing that green zone fitness and getting that baseline closer to 1.0. This type of training is going to be incredibly fatiguing for you. It's going to cost you a lot of volume that would be better placed becoming more efficient, more fit in the low end of your curve. So don't be in a hurry to get to this tough stuff. Okay, that's zone three and zone four. Next time, I'm going to cover determining zone five. It's a little bit different, but it's also nice and simple. I'm going to give you a simple way to determine that depending on your sport. Thanks for listening.